quick revision video on oxidation number. So we'll start with the essentials. Oxidation number is based on a set of rules that apply to atoms. The oxidation number is a measure of the number of electrons involved in bonding to a different element. The sum of oxidation numbers is equal to the overall charge of the species. Oxidation number is used when writing formulae and balancing electrons in equations to check that all the electrons have been accounted for. In half equations, the total change in oxidation number is equal to the number of electrons involved. And finally, in redox reactions, so when you combine the two half equations together, the change in oxidation number for the oxidized species must be equal to the change in oxidation number of the reduced species. And that's why when you combine half equations, you get the electrons to be the same. So we'll start with the rules, so I'm just going to run through this table and then we'll look at some examples on the following slides. So rule number one, all pure elements have an oxidation number of zero and that's because they're not bonding to anything different. So just three examples, Na, oxygen in O2 and Ne. Rule number two, if you've got a group one, two or three element in a compound, so in other words, it's bonded to something different. They are always plus one for the group one, plus two for the group two, plus three for the group three. And there's three examples there. Fluorine is always negative one. And there's three examples of compounds with fluorine in. Gets a little bit trickier for the last three because we've got the word usually. So hydrogen is usually plus one. So there's some examples of where hydrogen is plus one. It's not plus one when it's bonded to a metal. So when hydrogen's bonded to a metal in a metal hydride, hydrogen has a negative one oxidation number. Oxygen is usually negative two. So there's some examples of oxygen with a negative two oxidation number. However, when it's bonded to fluorine, which is a more electronegative element than oxygen, Oxygen has a plus two oxidation number, and in peroxides, so something like hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, oxygen has a negative one oxidation number. And then finally, chlorine is usually negative one, so there's some examples of where chlorine is negative one for its oxidation number. And the thing to watch out for for chlorine is when it's bonded to fluorine or oxygen, so they're both more electronegative than chlorine, chlorine has to have a positive oxidation number. So in this slide we'll look at the three steps that we use to calculate oxidation number. So step number one, you assign known oxidation numbers from the rules. Step number two, you look at the overall charge and remember that's got to be the sum of the oxidation numbers. And step number three is you calculate the oxidation number for the unknown atom. So the example we'll start with, we'll do two of these. So the first one is, what's the oxidation number of chromium in K2Cr2O7, potassium dichromate? So rule number one, assign oxidation numbers from the rules. So the potassium, remember, group one element is always plus one. So we've got two of those. So I've written plus one twice. Common mistake there would be to say plus two for the two potassiums which is kind of dangerous territory because the potassium, each potassium has a plus one oxidation number. And for oxygen, I've written seven separate negative twos. Rule number two, so the overall charge is zero. There's no charge, this is not an ion in other words. So basically all of these oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. So, so far we've got negative two times seven. So we've got negative 14 and we've got plus two from those two plus ones. So the two chromiums are obviously plus 12, so if we divide that by two, we get plus six for each chromium. The second example I'm gonna look at is an ion. So what's the oxidation number of manganese in MnO4 minus? So again, we'll do the same thing. Rule number one, put in the oxidation numbers that we know about from the rules. So there's four negative twos for those four oxygens. The overall charge is negative one now. So we've got basically minus eight 
We've got to be left with minus 1, so the manganese is going to have to be plus 7. So I'm just going to finish the video with how to use oxidation numbers when we're naming compounds. That's called systematic naming. So Roman numerals are used to indicate the oxidation number of an element that can exist in more than one oxidation state. So we're going to look at the oxyanions of nitrogen and chlorine. So there's two nitrogen oxyanions, so basically just nitrogen and oxygen with a negative charge, and two for chlorine and oxygen, again with a negative charge. So we'll start with what we know. We've got three oxygens, so three times minus two. We need to be left with the minus one charge, so that one nitrogen must be plus five. So this is called the nitrate five ion, but we use the Roman five, the, the V there in the bracket. The NO2 one minus ion now. So again, same sort of thing. We've got two negative twos, and we've got to leave a minus one charge. So this time nitrogen is plus three. So this is the nitrate three ion. Now these have got alternative names, which you may have heard. We've got the nitrate ion, so often when the nitrate ion is referred to, it's basically talking about the NO3 one minus ion, so that's really called nitrate five. And the nitrate three ion is known as the nitrite ion. But in the exam, they would ask you for a nitrate and then a Roman numeral. So the next ones, the two chlorine ones, will do the same thing again. So we've got negative two from that one oxygen. We need to be left with minus one charge, so chlorine's got to be plus one, therefore this is called chlorate one. And in the final one, we've got four times two minus, so that's um, eight minus from that. We've got to be left with one minus, so this time it's plus seven, so that's called chlorate seven. And the alternative names for these is hyperchlorite and perchlorate. But seriously, don't worry too much about the alternative names. It's literally just the eight name and the Roman numeral that an exam would be asking for. So the final slide is systematic naming, but we're working out the formula now. So we're kind of doing it the other way around. So we'll use iron's oxides to illustrate this one. So iron can form two oxides, iron two oxide and iron three oxide. What are their respective formulae? So we'll do iron two oxide first. So I'm just putting in an Fe and an O. So this time we know that the iron's plus two from the Roman numeral, and we know from the rules that oxygen is negative two. So what combination of those two would give us no overall charge, because this is a neutral compound? Well, one of each works, so that's the formula of iron two oxide, FeO. Iron three oxide, so we'll do the same thing again, an iron and an oxygen, and then put in what we know. So iron three means that the iron is plus three oxidation number from the Roman numeral. Oxygen's minus two from the rules. And so this time, what combination of these would give us zero overall charge? At the moment, we've got plus three with negative two. That would end up with a plus one charge. So what combination of these is gonna leave us with no overall charge? Well, it's two Fe's, so that'll get us up to plus six and three O's, and that'll get us to minus six. So that's the formula of iron three oxide. If you wanna see how oxidation number can be used to write half equations and redox reactions, you need to watch my quick revision video on half equations.